Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo run on the Master Nightfall ordeal this week, which is Sabbath and Song. As you can see here, these are going to be the modifiers for the actual strike. Now, the, the most important one, I think, is togetherness. You do not get back health immediately. You don't regenerate health the way that you normally do in a normal strike or in a normal situation. It takes about 20 seconds or so for you to get health back. So that's kind of the major one. This is going to be the setup I'm going to be doing on Voidwalker. Obviously for the grenades, which is why I've got the Controverse, Controverse hold on, because they give me enhanced regeneration of these grenades. So I'm going to be using an Unstoppable Hand Cannon, as you can see the 7th Seraph Officer Revolver. I'm going to be using Ariana's Vow for Barrier Champions, and I'm going to be using the Wendigo. That has dual usage, and you'll, we'll speak more about that in a bit. The mods I'm going to be using, it's predominantly uh, boss resists. Uh, I've got high energy fire and special ammo finder on the helmet. Uh, fastball, large weapon loader and boss resist. Uh, boss resist counter charge. Hand cannon reserves and hive invigoration. I've got three hive mods on. I've got hive armaments on the legs. Hand cannon dexterity for better handling. Special ammo scavenger. Void, void damage resistance. Boss resist, oppressive darkness and hive barrier. So the reason why I've went with boss resist is because the champions count as bosses. Counter charge is obviously every time I break the shield I'll become charged with light and high energy fire means I'll do more damage whilst I'm charged with light. So everything is kind of built around the, the champions and, and the boss. Now the Wendigo is very specific. The Wendigo will blind the Shriekers. So slamming the, sl slamming the orbs should never be a problem because you just fire it. And it's and it breaks, it, it blinds the shrieker, so you can slam in relative relative safety, which was not always a thing. The hunter really had the best time on this strike up until up until you, we found out you could do that. So the other thing about this is obviously we're doing the master. So I mean I'm still under 1080, so I'm not quite overpowered in doing this. You do have all three shield types. You have a couple. Of, there's not very many solar. There's like three solar, and they're all they're all wizards. You've got two in this um, initial area. You've got some arc knights, and you've got some void wizards. So, kind of that's why I've went with arc void solar, obviously, so I can cover up because you've got match game. Anything else? Although the Arianas, it does take about ten shots, but it can break through the shield eventually. So the other thing is when you when you kill these, as you can see, when you kill acolytes, I mean it's a dual kind of dual solar uh, thing with the acolytes. When you kill them, they they drop pools of fire, and they also fire like solar grenades at you. So you have to be very careful there. And as you can see, I'm not regenerating health. But that's the idea of having Hive Invigoration, because every time I kill a champ, an elite, yellow bar, orange bar, whatever you want to call them, whenever I kill one of those, I will get my class ability back. So, it's worthwhile from the start remembering, whenever you're going to be fighting an elite, put down your Rift, if you're doing this on the Warlock. So you can see, I haven't bothered here because I, I didn't feel like I was going to be in too much bother. I always come over the stairs after I've cleared the initial area as you can see i'm putting down a grenade and just jumping over it trying to coax all the enemies into the grenade and controverse done its job because i got my grenade back because of the enhanced uh recharge once you take out the once you take out the initial kind of wave of of thrall back away to this side of the stairs because the barrier champion will shoot you from over where he is so you do not want to be get involved in that as you can see I uh, threw my grenade a little bit too short there, which means I'm not going to get that charge. But luckily, with the amount of adds there are on who we've got to kill, uh, I should have my grenade back before I need to challenge uh, the barrier champion. So I'm just using Ariana so I can range attack these these uh, these enemies. Normally, the other kind of modifier you can get on this, and it was actually it's what I thought I had to start with. Uh, is that exploders they basically have got more health and luckily it wasn't the case <clears throat> because especially in Sabbath and you get a lot of exploders and they really are tanky when that modifier is on but as you can see it's, done, it's not too difficult to put down but to put them down and be aware this what this guy nearly always tries to sneak around behind you so just be aware of that 
make sure you've cleared out this area as you can see we've almost got my grenade back as you can see there's still another explorer they really are sneaky uh, make sure that you know don't ads for too long before you're actually going to take out a barrier as you can see the grenade's quite it's got quite a good area of effect so even though it never landed on the platform it's still doing massive damage to him and it's not really that difficult to take him down i know that there's this thing all oh, ariana ariana but man it just does such a good job why wouldn't you use it so we got our grenade back so we're going to attack this guy now you'll see what i'm trying to do i'm not bothering waiting for shield breaks i'm not timing my shots because i've got the catalyst so it, it reloads the ariana reloads as soon as i holster it it takes about two to two, three seconds and the wendigo does the same thing so i don't have to worry about reloading the wendigo i know it's getting sunsetted but until it does it's really good to couple with a good primary or good energy for DPS because you can just, if you've got a, an energy or a, a weapon that, that uh, suffers from reload animation, like as an Aggie, you can really get some good DPS by cancelling animations and, you know, the, the auto-loading holster really makes up for it. So I waited for my grenade so that I could coax both these sets of thrall out, all go into the grenade, run into the second door and then I always just cut away left and I go over here onto this frame. Now the reason I jump up onto here is it doesn't happen very often but sometimes the ogre will just fancy coming out to see you and you do not want to be standing in any location where the ogre can uh, become intimate with you with his eye blast. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. So there's a lot, I'm just I'm just trying to coax all the thrall out. You don't really want to be engaging with the thrall, uh, or engage, sorry, engaging with an ogre when you know that there's thrall there. So what we're going to do here, I've got uh, counter charge. So uh, as you can see, every time I, I stop this uh, ogre, I'm waiting to see if he's going to walk into the grenade. He didn't. But as you can see on the left there, every time I stop or break a barrier or stop an enemy, I'm going to get charged with light. And then my high energy fire kicks in. So I'll do more damage against these ads once that happens. He fancied taking a little bit of his health back. A bit cheeky, I thought. But you can see it's big damage you, you're doing. I'm, I'm not even hitting all crits. So... Because I've got high, because I've got the high energy fire every time I break them, what I decided to do was just try and finish him uh, with the hand cannon. As you can see, it's ridiculous, but he's literally backed right into the corner there, and that's him down. Now, what I'm going to do here, just make sure I've got enough ammunition. I want this, but that, that uh, I want this brick here, but the champion has kind of taken a liking to me. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cancel this. I'm going to put down a rift. Just give myself that extra protection because I'm going to get the rift back upon killing him. I'll drop a grenade on top of him and then I'm just going to go for him. As you can see, I've kill him before he gets his shield up. That's high energy fire coupled with oppressive darkness. It doesn't work all the time, but when it does work, it's sweet, man. So again, rift, grenade, and then just go after them. He got his... He got his... Uh, he got his uh, shield up, so I'd ran out of ammo, so I just switched to the Wendigo and finished them there. So now I'm going to go and scavenge some ammunition, and we move on to the next area. In this strike, there are a couple of main areas, and then there's... Savathun kind of stands alone as one... Well, I say it stands alone. It's one of the few that has ads everywhere. There's no skipping, there's no... There's no, I'm not going to kill this champion. Or you, ha you basically have to kill everything in front of you. Just about. And I don't think at the end it comes up that I got the platinum. It does that sometimes. But there's no way you can't get the platinum in Savathun. You have to kill all the champions. So, I mean, it's luck of the draw. A couple of friends of mine, when they were doing Grandmasters, had to clear everything. And, and they never got the you know the platinum score. So, it, it's, it just happens. I, this is my second attempt at this. The first time I beat it, but I actually was testing out the strategy at the boss and it got caught out in the open by one of the champions, so I just reloaded the boss and done it. 
and it gave me platinum, it was the exact same amount of kills. So it is a platinum run. All champions defeated. Uh, but then again, in Savathun, doing any of these runs has to be a platinum because you can't skip a boss. So, as I say, it's one of the few ones where you can't run past enemies. You have to clear each in, each uh, location, each segment. So, here I'm just going to burn some Arianas. Normally, adds that other side, but as you can see, they, 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 they've picked a different... A different location this time, so I've cleared almost all of them. There's just one that just needs one more shot. So while I'm here, I've cleared all the ads. I'm gonna throw my grenade on the, the the wizard, and as you can see, I put my rift down just so I could get my health back and make sure that uh, I got my rift. I could get my rift back and make sure I had health. So this is the Wendy going action. So I'm gonna put my rift down, hit the shrieker. And uh, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna wait because I haven't got my grenade. I'm gonna get another shot. It blinds the shrieker for the same amount of time as it does normal enemies. So as you can see, I just put a grenade on that that champion. Get my rift back. Now I'm gonna blind the shrieker again. Just take out these ads. Now it wouldn't let me grab the orb for some reason, so I I had to I had to go back. Make blind him again, pick it, pick the orb up, and I I decided to go down to the spot I always used to go to and just blind him from there and I can just if I can hit him, just blind him from there and I can just go and slam. No worries, no hassle. And that's that section done. This isn't one of this isn't one of the three sections that I class as a section, although it can cause a little bit of trouble. The opening section is can be rough if you if you don't adhere to the 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 kind of law of the land. If you if you try and stay in and around the enemies, you're dead. Going over to the top of the stairs is is your best bet. So once you do that and you take out the ogres, then this this whole section up to now is just like for me it's just filler. But there there is a lot of ads there. This little part in here is, again, it's just a filler section. And then this open part with the two ogres and there's a couple of champions. That's the next area you have to really kind of look out for. The boss, the boss is a tricky area, but there's recognized places to go. The, for me, the kind of, the trickiest, I wouldn't say the hardest, but the trickiest part is the part just before the double shrieker. That part with the three unstoppables and a, a, a couple of barriers. I think it's three barriers, three unstoppables. That can trip you up, even if you're an experienced player. So, we'll talk about that more, as I say, when we get to that. So, we had a barrier champion here. I just tried to clear some of the acolytes, the first three acolytes, and then throw a grenade and do the usual. Just keep hitting the, the champion with Arianas until he, di until he dies. Nothing too, uh, nothing too ta tactical there. So, what I'm going to try and do here, got my grenade. I'm going to try and drop a grenade on the ogre. So as soon as as soon as I fe feel comfortable and confident, I'll throw a grenade right over. As you can see, it's hit the ogre. While, while Oppressive Darkness is on that ogre, we'll obviously do a lot more damage. So I'll put a couple of shots on. As you can see, uh, I got my grenade straight back. So now I'm going to try and clear as many of those acolytes that are down by the champion. And then I'm just going to keep shooting away his, his arm until he comes back out. The way it kind of works is when you do the first bit of damage to this ogre, he'll hide behind one of those blast walls. Then he'll come back out once you get him to another where he is now, basically. And now he'll stay out for the rest of the fight. So the idea is do big damage and then just chip away, chip away at whatever you can see. Uh, that's kind of one of the reasons why I've got explosive rounds on my hand cannon for that kind of additional damage and then he'll come back out and then you finish him we have no acolytes here to worry about we've already dealt with those uh, and that's that champion there is another barrier champion in this area and depending on where you go depends where he goes if you stay up here he will eventually come back over so I'm going to stay up here I'm going to try and clear these acolytes here on the left there is a arc shielded knight over to the right of us We'll go and get him afterwards, and then that will leave us with the ogre and a couple of wizards, more arc shielded knights, but no more champions. So, we'll just try and 
clear these little guys because there's nothing worse than trying to fight a champion and you're getting solar bombs hitting you. So there he is. Just put down a whale because we're going to get it back. Or a rift, sorry. We're going to get it back as soon as he's he's uh, dead. So I know I don't have to say this, but I'm going to. Hitting crits on the champion, even when the barrier is up, you will do more damage. The barrier isn't like this isn't the divinity. It doesn't, you know, it does matter where you hit the, the champion to do the damage. So I'm just what I'm trying to do is you can see I've not anybody who's been watching the channel for long enough knows I'm a stickler for conserving ammo, making sure you don't get into a situation where you, you've ran out of ammo. So when at all possible, based on your based on the enemy's health, choose your weapon wisely hit them with the, the, the weapon you've got the, the most ammo for. If you're not actually needing to do that initial big damage. So like here, I would put the grenade on this ogre. I wouldn't then start hitting him with, with my primary. I want to do big damage to him. I want to get him to go. As you can see, we've took two thirds of his health off him. But if I break some an enemy's shield and I don't have a lot of energy, but I've got a lot of heavy, then I'll just continue with the heavy. Case in point. And then, primer. Now I'll go hunting for more energy. It's, it's just about making sure you don't get yourself into a situation where you need a certain type of ammunition and you don't have it. So I think I've hoovered up all the special around here. There's there's the wizard. I've only got 12 shots and I'm, I'm kind of, I'm going to need a few for the two wizards at least. So I'm just going to conserve that last bit. Took a couple of hits there, but it was worth it for the extra shots. There is another wizard, so there's, there is another elite, so I will get my my uh, well back, my rift. I'm going to toss a grenade up there on the boss, let that kind of chip away at him, and then just same mop up any of the smaller ads. There's a lot of special up there. I'm feeling a little bit better about my special situation. I've got to watch out. I know the I know the wizard's about here somewhere. There the wizard is. The wizard kind of sneaked up on me a little bit. When she shot me, I didn't know actually where she was shooting me from because normally the second wizard stays up on the stairs or over to the left. That's normally where she is over there. That kind of location. She's gone now, so we're good. And I'll just make sure there isn't another acolyte hiding up there. And there's the boss, and we're good. That's this area done. Now, as I say, this next area we're going to be going to, for me, is one of the trickiest. Because there's a lot going on. You can be very exposed. I think there's another enemy that I forgot about to our right here. Comes charging down the stairs at me. Yep, there he is. Uh, I could have put my rift down because there's quite a few elites. I did put my rift down. I thought I did. <laughs> I, I thought I did, but I was letting you guys know that you guys could do it, but I've done it anyway. So I always throw a grenade here and try and just melt these guys because if you'll see here, one of them comes out and he does a fair amount of damage. They really do do a lot of damage to you. So I try and I normally try not to engage with those guys. But uh, now what we're going to do is, once we clear these crystals, we're going to really take this next section step by step. So we're going to take the farthest left champion, you'll see him when we come out, we're going to take him first. Then I'm going to push up and try and take the next champion in a, in a kind of, in a situation where hopefully my grenade has helped clear a few of the, the acolytes. So I'm going to put down a rift. And I'm going to charge my grenade, throw it at this champion, and unfortunately, he dodges behind that pot, which he normally doesn't do, and I would have had to put myself in harm's way to get him, so I just let him reset, and this time, back away a little bit, now I'm going to take him from even further away. I want him to move to the left. I broke his shield. I'm gonna reload because I want him to put his. I'm wanting him. Be, yes, that's what I want. I want him to put his shield back up. 
so that he doesn't go into cover. If he'd have went behind that pot again, he'd have regenerated and if I'd have had to use even more special on that, that could have been a problem, but normally doesn't do that. So now I'm using the cover just to get round the side. I've got my rift, put that down, and I'm going to put a grenade. As soon as I get my grenade, charge it, and just toss it over on top of the champion. And then I'm just going to go to work on the champion, as you can see. He doesn't get a chance to pop his shield. Now, the Acolytes, I believe, helped me there. I think they might have walked into him and kind of moved him as he was trying to go into his animation. It's all good for us. So, now I'm going to clear some of these Acolytes. We've still got two Wizards and a Champion here, but I, I, I used to go up on the top left and, and engage from there, but it's, it, it's not suicide, but it's asking a lot to not take serious damage. So, I don't do that. Instead, what I do is I kind of give myself... A small cone of attack which is this kind of area here the champion very rarely will cut he'll never really come over to you but sometimes he'll move into into position where he can see you as far up as he can come and you can control that as you can see you'll see him just coming into view and there you go so we can control this now because we're in cover now what they'll normally do is they'll normally dive out the way and then because they're tactical geniuses they'll dive out the way and then they'll walk straight back in the direction they dived out of the way of. So they will normally always walk back into the grenade. Now I've got my grenade back, I'm just going to put it, I normally throw the grenade when there's a double wizard, throw it on the crystal in between them and it'll kill both of them. Now as soon as we get up to this uh, I'm just making sure because I'd never actually seen that both the wizards were dead when I was doing it. And it actually happens later on as well, but I'll, you'll see that for yourselves. When you get up to this uh, up to this area here, all these uh, all these uh, thrall will come at you. So I'm going to kill this one at the back and then I'm just going to melee this one just to get my grenade. Because when we pick this orb up... I'm going to put a charge grenade at the bottom of the first set of stairs just to clear, as you can see right there, just to clear all the thrall. There's, an ex there's a couple of exploders that come up. It kills one of the exploders. The other two are quite far behind, so I'm just going to use just a little bit of special. Now there's a now we've got a champion here. That, that there's a couple of just normal acolytes. I want to clear the acolytes. I'm trying to just leave it me and the champion. I don't really want to have to dodge those solar grenades and as you can see I'm trying to keep pick up the orb so I don't lose it. I don't want to have to run back at this point to get the orb. I'm not bothered if I've got to go back at some point here but I don't want to go back right now so same thing again grenade and then I'm just going to burn. The, the other reason for using the Wendigo sometimes is you can keep a consistent damage level up on the target whilst letting Ariana reload. So it's, it's not always about using the grenade launcher just to do damage. Sometimes it's tactical. So there's normally about three or four acolytes behind here. I shot that exploding barrel. That normally kills most of them but because maybe because when, when a master maybe that's why it never killed them all. There is a barrier champion around the side so what we'll do is we'll throw a grenade and then just do the usual, get the hits on the barrier, and that kills him. Pick up the orb. So what, what's cool now is we've kept the, the orb long enough that we've activated the next section. Because if you lose your orb before you kill that but before you kill that barrier champion, uh, you will have to go and get the orb again to act, activate the unstoppables. So now that we've activated the next section, if I lose the orb now, it doesn't matter. I can still do this section, just have to go back and get the orb at the end. So I'm just going to burn my super here on this unstoppable. And I, he didn't like that, so he walked away, which is cool. That's one down. I'm trying to keep the orb, but I think I lose it here. I think just just looking to see where the next bar, the next unstoppable with all the other ads. I just left it for too long. I should have picked it up again before before now. Because it's halfway. 
as you can see, there's, there's not a lot going on down here. There's a barrier, uh, unstoppable grenade, and then I'm just gonna melt him. Wendigo does a lot of damage for a grenade launcher, and the orb's already gone. And I was thinking to myself, why did the orb go that quickly? But it was because I'd done all that messing about before I moved forward. If I had have regenerated it after I'd done everything, it would have still been there. What, shooting the, the traps and reloading. I should have picked it up after I'd done all that. But no harm, no foul. The point is, we're still alive. We're still in control of the situation. Number one is to be in control of the situation. Now we're just going to... We, we know we've got another unstoppable, but there's a couple of acolytes down there. We want to be in a position where we can get into that room without taking any kind of... Uh, sly side fire from any of these ads. So we're far enough away that the unstoppable shouldn't charge us. He shouldn't charge us and as you can see it was a good grenade. Lots and lots of damage. Really, really melted them. So now all the ads are clear. I know that there isn't there isn't any more acolytes. So the what we're going to do now is we're going to get this orb we're going to kind of try and tiptoe into the Shriekers room as much as possibly. You know, I don't want the Shriekers to, to be going full tilt before we even get into the room. Because there's a good chance you could actually die before you even get any position. And then we're going to fire the Wendigo at one of the Shriekers. That's going to blind them and I can slam pretty easily. Simple. Now, for Hunters, uh, you can tether the Shriekers. But it's, it just, you're more exposed when you tether this. This is the way to do it, really. So I always go to this left-hand side. And then put down a rift. The reason I don't mind putting a rift is because when we get the the wizards next, there'll be a set of two wizards, I'm going to get it back. I don't need it until after those wizards. So as you can see, you only have to hit one of the shriekers to blind both of them. And pretty easy way to not die there and get past this quickly. So again, we've got a grenade. If you don't have a grenade, wait for your grenade and then charge it and throw it at the crystal. It will kill both of them. I, I always put a couple of shots on just to speed the process up. Now, because I've got high armaments, obviously a good thing. Uh, if, you're, if you want to go with a full yeah, hive idea. build, I mean, we hive repurposing would be here. really good here as well. You would get a grenade back after every... Every time you break a shield, you would get a grenade Together. back. So that that would be worthwhile as well. But I felt Controverse does the, does that job anyway. I, I really get my grenades back quite quickly. So this section is just bide your time. The idea is to try and get a couple of shots on the wizard each time. Just break the wizard's shield. If you don't do kind of a little bit of damage to the wizard, I find that the wizard will kind of hang about and it's just time consuming and we don't really want to be waiting here for the wizard to decide that she wants to go. I put the rift down because there is, as you can see there, there's, there are elite explorers. They'll give us more, more rift back. I don't like pushing forward in these situations until uh, I can see what's in front of me. If I'm doing it as a strike, I'm normally gone. I'm in the boss room by now. I just run past all of these, but I mean, it's a strike. Who cares? <laughs> but um, I do care here because if I die, then it's egg on the face. Oh man, I'm going to have to do it again. So just put a couple of shots on that, that wizard. That's, an, that's normally enough for her to kind of bug out and not really want to take anything more to do with us. Make sure you, you don't push too far into this room uh, until, as I say, until you've cleared enough of these because exploders, man, they can kill you pretty quickly and there's nothing more annoying than to be killed by something you know you should have seen, you should have been aware of. You know, stuff happens to us all, but getting killed by things that you should have been paying attention to is a, one of the biggest frustra frustrations that I think most people find or experience in this game. One last one up here, and then we're on to the boss. Now, we have a couple of locations we're going to be attacking the boss from. From the start, I attack from here. So you break that kind of crystal at the back, and then charge grenade super. So I've got my charge grenade, throw super, and then rift. And then I'm going to try and get a couple of shots on 
the boss here to close him up. Because I know I'm going to get these ads. Stay in the rift. And there, we should be good. Just check to make sure that you've closed... There, you've, we've closed the... We've closed the... We've closed the, the boss. Now, this second location is in case you're getting hit and you've got no health. Is up here. Now, another good thing about being up here... I'll show you in a minute. Uh, you get to see the whole area so I can clear any kind of smaller ads. So that I'm not getting hit from multiple areas by ads that I can't see, didn't know were there. You know. But the, the, the other good thing about being up here is... You can take this champion over on the right from relative safety. So there's a little rock to the right. Once I feel like I've cleared enough of these ads, I know there's another ad over by him. So take him. Just miss him. But what I'm going to do is get myself comfortable up here. There we go. I'm going to throw a grenade over on top of him. And then start melting him and he goes down very very quickly press of darkness charge with light it's all good stuff and as I say this whole strike probably the probably the thing I get I get that gets said to me the most is it looks easy when you do it you know that's probably if I had to pick the comment that gets it looks easy when you do it is the comment that I get more than any other comment. It's not about how fast you kill things or where, where you, you know, where you stand is and, and, and all that type of stuff is a big part of it. But controlling the area, which is knowing where to stand. And, but it's also about knowing when to attack ads, knowing where the ads are. It's not just about spawn locations and and all these things. Anybody can know where the... You know, it's just looking. You just have to look to see where the ads come from. It's knowing which ads to attack first. You know? These ads that are closer to us, I didn't take them out to start with because I can use my, spe my, my primary on them. I took the ads further away because, you know, it's, it's, it's actually... You know, I didn't clear these ads with, when I was clearing the rest because I could come here in relative safety. And take them out with, with primary and save energy, save energy ammunition. So once you take that, once you take both champions down, you you that's us. We've activated the boss now. Now I don't have my super and I don't have my grenade, so I'm just gonna wait. And I'm just making sure I'm not getting encro encroached by any of the thrall. And they they don't come out just yet, but I'm I'm just making sure. So I'm just in kind of a head glitch location here. Just charge a grenade, put it on the boss. No, you don't have your super. And as you can see, because I've lined myself up perfect, just crit after crit, and now the throw are coming. I what I one thing I really hate about fighting thrall or any of those ads is that the animation they've got. Uh, when they come and attack you and you melee them, they duck your attack. It's part of their animation. So now I'm just, I know that I've got like eight, eight, eight thrall or something. So I'm just making sure none of them, because I'm, I'm, I'm pretty hurt. But I've almost got my rift. So I feel like I can survive until I get my rift. So now I'm going to clear some of these acolytes. And I'm going to try and put a grenade over onto the boss in a minute. I'm pretty sure I, I try and hit the boss with a grenade. Yep. And there we go. Good numbers. Now I'm going to try and get as many crits in as I can. Because what we want to do is, we when, before this boss closes up, we want to make sure we've took as much health as we can. I think I miss him with this grenade. Now, I think the reason why I missed him with the second grenade... I don't know if you've seen with the first grenade. I charged my grenade and then as I threw it, I moved forward. And that adds 
a little bit of uh, forward momentum onto the grenade throw. But I was pretty lucky there. I managed to land all my, just about all my grenade shots. I, th uh, I think I did grenade launcher shots. So there we go. The boss is just about closed up. Now what we've got here is we've got three, three unstoppable ogres. I remember the first time I ever done this as a master, and I remember saying three unstoppable ogres like it was a big deal. And it was simply be. I haven't done a lot of ordeals recently because. I don't know if you guys will remember, I wasn't the biggest fan of of the champion scenario. I enjoy having better enemies to fight and, you know, but it's just, it, it still feels like it's like cheap content. Like it's like, it's not any different, it's still Sabbath and Song, but now you've got to do it with double primary. You know, that's challenges that people put on YouTube. You know, I don't think it should be something we're all subjected to. But I, I must admit, Maybe maybe it's because I haven't been doing them that I really enjoyed doing this. This this was a really good uh, really good uh, fun ex fun run for me. I had a lot of fun doing it. So just a recap to where we've gotten to now. When you come in, break the boss's cr the crystal, Nova grenade, boss on onto the boss. The boss will move to the right, and then you put some shots, close them up, clear up some of the ads, and then take the two champions, and you'll come over here. Get the boss to move from the middle to the back and then close them. When you close them, you're going to get three unstoppables. The, my suggestion is always take the unstoppable that goes to the left. Two of them will go left. And in between taking the unstoppables, try and pick off the, the acolytes. You want to clear all the acolytes. But let me be very clear about this. There is a, a part you can't push past because you will then aggro the unstoppables. So I'm just... I'm, I'm, I'm looking... I want to take these acolytes out because they're, they're a pain in the backside. But, the, but what they're doing is most of them are just like coming out and having a little look but they're, 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 they're peeking me, you know, they're not actually engaging me. So I think there might still be one left. And I think what he does, and you'll see it in, in the video, I think once I take out the last unstoppable, he's going to push over that hill and move to my left. And it makes it very easy pickings for me. So, <clears throat> I'm just making sure I'm not going to run out of ammo. Now, you're going to see what I'm going to do here. I'm going to stop this champion. Once, once I put the grenade on him. I'm going to stop this champion. And then I'm just going to use my primary to finish him off because the grenade's doing good work the way I'm going to get ammo is once I've done a bit of damage I'm going to stun the unstoppable and while he's in a stunned state I can go and kind of forage for ammo like this so I'm going to have a look here take out this ad and then stop go and get ammunition and then I can push back safely. If I'd have done that without doing the multiple stun, that would have, the run would have been over. And you can see, you've seen that throw wandering, that acolyte wandering back over. So, I've got my grenade, I've got my super, I'm going to put a grenade on this champion, and then stop him, and just let the grenade eat my way. Can't see that, that acolyte, so I think, I think at this point I've decided the Acolyte will die once the Unstoppable goes down. So what I'm trying to do now is just make sure I keep my charge of light for actually shooting at the boss. And that's that's why I'm stopping them and I'm letting them get back up. The, cha the Unstoppables have got like kind of crazy hair. When it's lit up after you stop them, when it's lit up, you can't stun them again. When it kind of stops glowing, you can stun them again. So as you can see, we've done that. I'm going to get some shots on. I'm doing, I am doing. was doing 7,000 damage there as opposed to the 4.5 that I was doing without charge of light. Put down the rift. And there's that, that pesky acolyte. Now what I've done here, as you can see, now that the boss has moved into his kind of final state... 
I've moved to the left of this little little position and I am now safe from the boss. Now what I'm going to do is try and clear all of these thralls. Now there is quite a few of them but they, they don't rush me you know in groups. It's like groups are two at best and I, I, I do get to see them coming. So once once I'm once I'm positive or semi confident that I've took all the all the the throw, uh, charge a grenade. As you can see, you can never be sure. Charge a grenade that will take out the wizard. I'm just making sure that there are no more in my direct eye line, and then I'm gonna go over here, this kind of place down here, go that way and get into this cover here now think again I don't think it should be this difficult to grab this orb it should not be this difficult but for some reason I mean I'm standing right at it and it's not even giving me the cue to grab it so I never got hit pretty cool I'm just waiting I'm waiting because there is a f the boss has a firing mechanism he has an animation for firing so he does a set amount of shots and then you get two, th about three seconds of a break. That I, I was being super, uh, super uh, confident with those grenades. I tried it again on the other one and it didn't work. But uh, the boss fires you eight times. And then you get two seconds of a break. Three seconds of a break. So what I do is... I kind of wait until he fires his sixth shot. This is for when I'm going to take the orb and slam it. This is the way we're going to slam it because it used to be that every other class had a pro uh, had had trouble doing this by the hunter, and that, the reason was because the hunter could go invisible and just go and slam whenever whenever they wanted to. I have a bit of problem taking the shield, and as you can see, it takes about nine or ten shots, but I kind of. Re start to reload then pick the, pick the orb up and then have to wait for the reload and then he's got a shield back so when you're doing this as you can see I almost ran out of ammo there I'm gonna reload make sure that you've reset the orb and then just deal with deal with the, the wizard totally I never hit him again with a grenade I used to hit him every time with a grenade I used to hit the wizards all the time Make sure when you start shooting at the wizard, that the wizard is your only focus. As you can see, for some reason, I thought I'd killed the wizard, and I haven't. And I still haven't noticed that I haven't killed the wizard. So now I'm in a bad spot. Make sure your, en your enemy has gone down before you, you move forward. So now I'm just going to... Put a couple more shots, got very little left, so I'm going to use my explosive rounds. And what happened there was I killed the wizard inside its shield because explosive rounds damage the, he the health of the enemy inside their shield. So we've almost done this. Now that I've got the orb, uh, I'm going to go to this side here, and I'm, I actually missed the timing of the, the, the well, but what I what you should do or what I'm trying to do maybe not what you should do but what I'm trying to do here is put down a whale a rift sorry so that I can run through it because the the the, the, the Sabbath and fires eight shots at you so we're gonna go on six so she's still gonna fire two shots at us but that gives us six six seconds to slam before she's gonna start firing at us again plenty of time to do it six to eight seconds so as you can see there's six she fires two more at me I've slammed I'm safe charge a grenade grenade and then super and as you can see I anticipated the boss firing again and jumped just in case uh, uh, just in case the the Nova didn't kill her and that's the run guys if this is a very repeatable run, as I say, this is the second time I've done it. You guys can get this, no problem. I've got every faith in you. Thanks a lot to everybody that's watched this. I hope this helps. This would help you, the boss strategy especially, will help you with Chasm of Screams. As you can see, I got Chasm of Screams show up there and not Sabbath and Song. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope this helps you get your completion.
And until the next video, take it easy, and I'll see you there.